I was out hiking, enjoying the peace and quiet of the forest. It was a warm day, and the sun filtered through the thick leaves above. The path was familiar. I had walked it many times before. But today, I decided to go a bit further, exploring an area I had never been to. As I moved deeper into the forest, the trees grew closer together, their branches forming a web above me. The air felt cooler, and the forest grew quieter. The path became less clear, and I had to push through some bushes. After a while, I noticed the sun was starting to set. I checked my watch and realized I had been walking for hours. A sudden rustling sound behind me made me stop. I turned quickly, but there was nothing there. I told myself it was just an animal. But as I kept walking, the feeling of being watched grew stronger. Every now and then, I heard faint noises, twigs snapping, leaves rustling. My heart began to race, and I walked faster. I tried to find my way back, but the forest seemed different now. The familiar landmarks were gone, replaced by endless trees. Panic started to set in as the light faded. I took out my phone, but there was no signal. I cursed myself for not bringing a map. Determined to stay calm, I decided to head in what I thought was the direction of the main trail. But the deeper I went, the more lost I felt. The forest seemed to close in around me, and the shadows grew longer and darker. After what felt like hours of wandering, I stumbled into a small clearing. In the center was an old, abandoned cabin. Relief washed over me at the sight of shelter. I approached cautiously, hoping to find something useful inside. The door creaked loudly as I pushed it open. Inside, it was dark and musty, but at least it was a place to rest and think. I found some old matches and managed to light a small fire in the cabin's fireplace. The warmth and light were comforting, and I felt my panic start to ease. As I sat by the fire, I tried to come up with a plan. I knew I couldn't stay there forever, but at least I could wait until morning when I could see better. The night passed slowly, but eventually, the first light of dawn broke through the cracks in the cabin walls. I felt a bit more hopeful. With the daylight, I could find my way better. I packed up my things and stepped outside. The forest, which had seemed so scary in the dark, looked almost welcoming in the morning light. I decided to follow the sun east, hoping it would lead me out of the forest. After a few hours of walking, I finally heard the sound of running water. I followed the sound and came upon a stream. Streams often lead to larger bodies of water and sometimes to towns, so I followed it. After what felt like an eternity, the trees began to thin, and I saw the glint of sunlight on metal. I broke into a run and soon found myself on a gravel road. Relief washed over me. I flagged down the first car I saw, and the driver, a kind woman, offered to take me to the nearest town. As we drove away from the forest, I looked back at the trees. What had seemed so frightening the night before now seemed almost beautiful in the daylight. I felt a sense of relief for having made it through. The forest had tested me, but it had also shown me a strength I didn't know I had. Just as I began to relax, I glanced at my reflection in the car window and froze. Behind me, in the trees, I saw a dark figure standing still, watching as we drove away. My heart pounded. I blinked, and it was gone. I looked back at the driver, but she hadn't seen anything. I forced myself to breathe telling myself it was just my imagination. But as we left the forest behind, I couldn't shake the feeling that something, or someone, was still out there, waiting. I had always loved walking in the forest near my house. It was a peaceful escape from the noise and rush of everyday life. One evening, I decided to take a late walk. The sun was starting to set, casting long shadows across the path. I wasn't worried. I'd walked this route many times before. As I went deeper, the light began to fade quickly. The tall trees seemed to close in on me, and the air turned cooler. I walked faster, hoping to reach the clearing where the moonlight would make things brighter. But the path I knew so well seemed different. Branches appeared where there shouldn't be any and familiar spots were nowhere to be seen. My heart started to race. 
I felt like someone was watching me. Every rustle of leaves or snap of a twig made me jump. I told myself to stay calm, reminding myself that it was just my imagination. I kept walking, but the feeling of unease grew stronger. I glanced at my phone for light, but it was dead. I cursed myself for not charging it before leaving. The forest now seemed like an endless maze. I stumbled over roots and tripped on rocks. My mind raced with thoughts of what could be lurking in the darkness. Panic began to set in, but I forced myself to keep moving. After what felt like hours, I saw a faint light through the trees. I hurried toward it, ignoring the scratches from branches and the uneven ground beneath my feet. The light grew brighter, and soon I came out into a small clearing. To my huge relief, I saw a familiar spot, the old wooden signpost marking the edge of the forest. I took a deep breath and made my way toward it. As I reached the signpost, I saw the road that led back to my house. The streetlights were a comforting sight. I took one last look at the dark forest behind me, grateful to have made it out safely. The next day, I went back during daylight. I realized I had wandered off the main path at some point. It was a stark reminder of how easily one could get lost. But I was also reminded of my determination to find my way back despite the fear and uncertainty. I decided to stick to walking in the forest only during the day from then on. But even as I walked the familiar paths in the daylight, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. The forest felt different now, like it was hiding secrets just beyond my sight. I couldn't help but wonder if I had really been alone out there in the dark. One evening, weeks later, as I was getting ready for bed, I glanced out the window toward the forest. For a split second, I thought I saw a shadow move among the trees. My heart skipped a beat. I blinked, and it was gone. I told myself it was just my mind playing tricks on me, but deep down, I knew the forest had changed, and so had I. I still walk there sometimes, but I can't shake the feeling that something is watching, waiting for me to wander off the path again. And every night, as I lie in bed, I wonder if someday I'll look out that window and see more than just a shadow. I decided to go camping alone to clear my head. Work had been too much lately, and I needed to get away from everything. I found a remote forest online, far from the city. I packed my tent, some food, and a flashlight, and left early in the morning. The drive took hours, but the changing views kept me interested. When I reached the forest, I parked my car and walked a few miles in, wanting to be deep in nature. The tall trees, thick bushes, and the sounds of birds and leaves rustling were just what I needed. I set up my tent in a small open area and spent the afternoon walking on nearby trails and taking pictures. As the sun began to set, I made a small fire and cooked my dinner. The forest got really quiet, with only the occasional sound of an owl breaking the silence. The darkness was deeper than I thought it would be, and my flashlight only lit up a few feet ahead of me. I tried to read a book, but I kept feeling like someone was watching me. I told myself it was just my imagination and went to bed early, hoping to get a good night's sleep. In the middle of the night, a noise woke me up. It sounded like slow, careful footsteps crunching on the dry leaves outside my tent. My heart started pounding as I lay there, listening closely. The footsteps walked around my tent a few times, then stopped. I held my breath, trying to hear anything else but it was silent. I didn't dare move or turn on my flashlight, too scared to let whoever or whatever was out there know I was awake. Minutes felt like hours as I waited, every part of my body tense. Finally, I gathered enough courage to unzip the tent just a tiny bit and peek out into the darkness. My flashlight showed nothing but trees and bushes. The footsteps had stopped, but the fear stayed. I spent the rest of the night in a restless half-sleep, my mind imagining who or what could have been outside. At first light, I packed up my camp as fast as I could, eager to leave the forest behind. As I walked back to my car, I couldn't shake the feeling that someone was watching me. Every snap of a twig or rustle of leaves made me jumpy. When I finally reached my car, 
I felt a huge sense of relief. I drove away, promising myself I would never camp alone again. Back home, I told the story to a few friends. They all had their ideas. An animal, another camper, or maybe just my imagination playing tricks on me. But while I never figured out what or who was in the forest that night, the experience taught me to respect the isolation and unpredictability of nature. Later that week, I noticed something odd while unpacking my camping gear. There were small, muddy footprints on my tent. They weren't mine, and they definitely weren't made by an animal. The realization sent chills down my spine. I looked back at the forest and wondered if I had truly been alone that night. I tried to push the thought away, but deep down, I knew I had seen something real. The forest had secrets, and one of them had found me. One Saturday morning, I decided to go on a solo hike. The weather was great, clear skies and a light breeze. I packed my stuff, water, snacks, a map, and my phone. I picked a trail in a forest reserve I'd never been to before but heard was beautiful and not too hard. The first couple of hours were peaceful. I loved the sound of birds and the leaves crunching under my feet. The path was easy to follow, and I felt good about my decision. But as I went deeper into the forest, the trail got narrower and harder to see. I wasn't worried though. I had a map and my phone with GPS. Around noon, I stopped for lunch. I found a spot by a small stream, ate my sandwich, and drank some water. After a short break, I got back on the trail. That's when things started to feel weird. The path I was on seemed to vanish. I checked my map and phone, but they weren't much help. The thick trees made it hard to get a signal. I decided to keep going, hoping to find the trail again. The more I walked, the more lost I felt. Everything looked the same, and I realized I was lost. My heart began to pound. I tried to stay calm and think clearly. I remembered reading that if you get lost, you should stay where you are and try to signal for help. But I couldn't just sit and wait. I felt like I had to keep moving. As the sun started to set, the forest became darker and creepier. I came across an old, abandoned cabin. It looked like no one had been there for years, but it was a place to stay. I decided to spend the night there, hoping to find my way back in the morning. The night was long and cold. Every noise outside made my heart race. I barely slept, constantly on edge. When the first light of dawn came through the cracks in the cabin walls, I knew I had to get moving. With new determination, I headed out again, paying more attention to where I was going. After a few hours of walking, I heard the sound of rushing water in the distance. I followed it and found a river. I knew rivers often lead to people, so I walked along it downstream. After a while, I found a group of hikers. Relief washed over me as I approached them. They were surprised to see me and quickly offered help. One of them had a working GPS, and they led me back to a main trail. I made it back to my car, tired but safe. The experience taught me to respect nature and the importance of being prepared. I never went hiking alone again without the right gear and a solid plan. As I drove away, I glanced in the rearview mirror. In the distance, I could see the outline of the forest. Something felt off. I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. Later that night, as I lay in bed, I heard a soft whisper. Come back, it seemed to say. My blood ran cold. I never told anyone about that part, but I knew I'd never hike that trail again. I decided to go hiking alone on a cool autumn morning. The forest trail was one I'd been on many times before, but today, it felt different. The trees seemed taller, the shadows darker. I shook off the uneasy feeling and focused on the crunch of leaves under my boots. About halfway up the trail, I noticed something odd. There were no birds singing, no animals rustling in the bushes. The silence was creepy. As I kept going, I came across a small, abandoned campsite. 
The tent was torn, and there were personal items scattered around. A chill ran down my spine. I thought about turning back, but my curiosity got the better of me. I climbed higher, and the path became narrower and less clear. The thick leaves blocked out most of the sunlight, making it hard to see. Suddenly, I saw fresh footprints on the ground. They were too big to be mine and looked recent. I felt a jolt of fear but told myself it was probably another hiker. Then I heard it, a faint, steady sound, like something heavy being dragged. My heart pounded in my chest as I tried to find where the sound was coming from. It was just ahead. I moved slowly, each step careful and quiet. As I rounded a bend, I saw it, a figure in the distance, dragging a large, bulky bag. Instinct told me to hide. I crouched behind a thick tree, my breath shallow and fast. The figure stopped, and I could hear their heavy breathing. It was clear now, the bag was stained, and a horrible smell filled the air. Panic surged through me. I had to get out of there, but I needed to be smart about it. I waited until the figure moved further down the trail, then quietly retraced my steps. Every sound seemed louder, the snap of a twig, the rustle of leaves. I felt like my follower could hear my heartbeat. After what felt like forever, I reached the abandoned campsite again. I checked my phone, no signal. I kept moving, faster now, almost running. The trail widened, and I knew I was close to the entrance. Relief washed over me as I saw the familiar trailhead sign. I burst out of the forest, back onto the main road. I flagged down the first car I saw and explained what I had witnessed. The driver called the police, and they arrived within minutes. I led them back to the trail, heart still racing. The police found the campsite and the area where I had seen the figure. They discovered more evidence of something terrible and later told me they had been investigating a series of disappearances in the area. My report helped them track down the suspect, who was arrested a few days later. It took a while for me to shake the fear, but eventually, I found peace in knowing I had helped prevent further harm. I continued hiking but always with friends and always paying more attention to my surroundings. A few weeks later, I heard a noise outside my window late at night. My heart raced as I looked out and saw nothing but darkness. The police said they caught the man, but as I lay there in bed, I couldn't shake the feeling that someone, or something, was still out there, watching me. I had always loved hiking. The quiet, the peace, the feeling of freedom it gave me. One summer, I decided to try a trail I'd never done before. It was a remote path deep in the forest, miles away from any town or help. The trail was long and winding, stretching over rough ground with thick woods on either side. I started early in the morning, the sun barely peeking over the horizon. The air was cool and crisp, and I felt alive. The first few miles were easy. Birds chirped, and the smell of pine was strong. It was everything I loved about hiking. As the day went on, the trail got harder. Rocks and roots stuck out, making me watch my step carefully. The trees grew thicker, blocking out more and more sunlight. Around noon, I noticed the first signs of trouble. My GPS signal was weak, and my phone battery was draining fast. I shrugged it off determined to reach the trail's end before dark. A couple of hours later, I took a wrong turn. I didn't realize it at first, but the path started to look strange. Panic set in when I couldn't find any trail markers. The forest around me seemed to close in, and every direction looked the same. I was lost. I kept moving, hoping to find something I recognized. But the more I walked, the deeper into the woods I seemed to go. My water was running low, and I hadn't seen another hiker all day. The feeling of being alone was overwhelming. As evening approached, I knew I had to find shelter. The temperature was dropping, and I didn't want to be caught out in the open at night. I found a small clearing and decided to set up camp. I gathered some branches and tried to start a fire, but everything was damp. The fire sputtered weakly before dying out completely. The night was eerily quiet. Every rustle in the bushes made my heart race. 
I barely slept, constantly on edge. When dawn finally broke, I was exhausted but relieved. I packed up my things and decided to head in what I hoped was the direction of the main trail. Hours passed, and I began to lose hope. My legs were sore, my throat dry. Just when I thought I couldn't go any further, I heard the faint sound of running water. I stumbled toward it, desperate for a drink. The stream was a small miracle. I drank deeply and splashed water on my face, feeling a surge of energy. With new determination, I followed the stream, hoping it would lead me to civilization. It wasn't long before I saw a wooden bridge in the distance. Relief washed over me as I realized I had found a trail again. I crossed the bridge and soon came to a trailhead with a map. I was back on track. The rest of the hike was uneventful, but the fear of being lost stayed with me. When I finally reached my car, I collapsed into the driver's seat, overwhelmed with gratitude. I had made it out. The forest had tested me, pushed me to my limits, but I had survived. As I drove away, I thought about the experience. It had taught me respect for nature's power and unpredictability. But just as I was feeling relieved, I glanced in my rearview mirror. For a split second, I thought I saw a shadowy figure standing at the edge of the woods, watching me. My heart skipped a beat. I blinked, and it was gone. Even now, I'm not sure what I saw. But sometimes, late at night, I can almost feel eyes on me, like something from the forest never stopped watching. It was supposed to be a simple hike. I had done this trail many times before, so I didn't think twice about going alone this time. I packed my backpack with the usual, a couple of sandwiches, water, a small first aid kit, and my phone. The sky was clear, and the weather was perfect. The first hour was easy. I enjoyed the quiet, the sound of my boots crunching on the path, and the occasional rustle of leaves. I felt free away from the stress of daily life. About halfway through, I noticed a narrow path splitting off from the main one. Curious, I decided to check it out. I thought it might be fun to see where it went. The path was overgrown and rough. It looked like no one had used it in years. I had to push branches aside and step over fallen logs. After about twenty minutes, I realized I hadn't seen any of the usual trail markers. I pulled out my phone to check my GPS, but there was no signal. I felt a bit worried but shrugged it off. I could just go back the way I came. As I turned around, something seemed wrong. The path looked different. It was like the forest had changed behind me. I couldn't find the way I had come from. I walked back and forth, but every direction looked the same. My heart started to pound. I was lost. Panic began to set in. I tried to stay calm, remembering what I had seen on survival shows, stay put, and wait for help. I found a clear spot and sat down, trying to save my energy. Hours passed. The sun started to go down, casting long shadows that made the forest look even scarier. Just when I was about to lose hope, I heard a distant sound. It was faint, but it was definitely a person. I shouted and waved my arms, hoping to be seen or heard. The sound got closer, and soon I saw a figure coming out of the trees. It was a park ranger. Relief washed over me. He explained that the narrow path I took was an old, forgotten trail. It wasn't on any of the new maps, and most people didn't know about it. He had been out looking for me after my family reported that I hadn't come home. We made our way back to the main trail, and I felt so thankful and relieved. As we walked back, I realized how lucky I was. I had made a stupid mistake by leaving the marked trail, but I was safe now. This experience taught me the importance of staying on the path and not taking unnecessary risks. When we finally came out of the forest, the sunset cast a warm glow on the world, and I felt a bit of peace. But just as we reached the parking lot, the ranger turned to me and said, You know, we don't usually patrol that old trail. It's strange your family even knew you were missing so quickly. I froze, confused. What do you mean? I asked. 
He looked at me with a puzzled expression. Your phone call. We got a call from your number saying you were lost and describing exactly where you were. That's why I knew where to find you. I checked my phone. No call was made from it. My hands started to shake as I stared at the screen. The ranger walked away, leaving me standing there with a cold chill running down my spine. If I didn't make that call, who did?